I've heard a rumor that the special license you seek to marry has been denied. I'm not quite sure what you believe I am to do about it. Keanu Reeves once said, if you don't fight for your love, what kind of love did you have? No, no, because if you're a lover, you gotta be a fighter. How so? Because if you don't fight for your love, what kind of love do you have? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Looks like Eloise is ready to live by that in Bridgerton season four. It's her time to make a choice. Will she go for a Scottish romance or will she reunite with Theo? Well, here's everything we know about how these lovers meet again. While Bridgerton season four might focus on Benedict, fan favorite Eloise will eventually get her own season. However, if it sticks to her book storyline, it could be a major issue. The Bridgerton books by Julia Quinn each highlight a different Bridgerton sibling finding love in Regency-era London. The Netflix series brought to life by Shonda Rhimes has already seen Daphne, Anthony, and Colin get happy endings. Eloise, though never having had her own full-on romance plot, has been a key character throughout the series. She's the family's free spirit, more interested in reading and debating than attending balls and searching for a husband. At the end of season three, Eloise heads to Scotland to step out of her comfort zone and discover herself. Hopefully when her turn comes, she'll end up with a different partner than the one from the books. Eloise's book romance is with Sir Philip Crane, a character who's already been introduced in the show. In season one, Philip, played by Chris Fulton, marries Marina after her lover George, who was also Philip's brother, dies in war. While Philip and Marina aren't featured in Season 3, we see Colin visit them in Season 2, where Marina is shown living unhappily. In the books, Marina's story takes a darker turn, marked by a suicide attempt and her eventual death, which deeply impacts Philip. Eloise steps in to console him through letters, leading to their eventual marriage. This storyline, while rich in character depth, poses challenges for the show. Marina's tale is filled with grief and tragedy, which could clash with the typically light-hearted and romantic tone of the series. Adding such heavy themes might disrupt the show's charm, which usually focuses on romance and societal drama with a sprinkle of humor. Given Marina's already difficult past, incorporating more tragedy might feel too intense for the show's vibe. To keep Eloise's romantic arc engaging and hopeful, the series might need to avoid this darker backstory. So, what are the alternatives? Eloise could explore a Scottish romance inspired by her journey to Scotland with Francesca Bridgerton. This could introduce her to new characters and fresh romantic prospects, adding an adventurous twist to her story while keeping with the show's energetic spirit. Another exciting option is reuniting Eloise with Theo Sharp, a character from season two. Theo is a printer's assistant who shares a strong intellectual bond with Eloise. Their chemistry and mutual respect suggest a romance based on deep understanding and shared values. A reunion with Theo would offer Eloise a heartfelt and stimulating romance, fitting well with the show's themes of love and personal growth. That said, Season 3's ending sets up two potential stars for Season 4, Francesca or Benedict. Both characters have compelling storylines that could make them the main focus. Francesca's storyline has a lot of potential. In season three, she married John Kilmartin and is now moving into his estate in Scotland. This sets up her romance perfectly, as Julia Quinn's When He Was Wicked details her story after John's untimely death, leading to her love story with Michael, who is reimagined as Michaela in the show. On the other hand, Benedict is also a strong contender for the spotlight. In the season three finale, he hints at a significant change coming his way, which might be tied to his love story. He also mentions Lady Bridgerton's Masquerade Ball, a key event in An Offer from a Gentleman, where he first meets his future wife, Sophie. Despite Francesca's storyline being set up, Benedict might be the better choice for season four's lead. He missed out on the spotlight in season three when Colin took center stage, and it would be disappointing if he missed out again. Benedict needs a clear direction, and as noted in the season three finale, he's ready for a major change. Plus, it might feel odd for the show to keep delaying his story. Francesca, while intriguing, might feel too new for the main role. Season three was the first real introduction audiences had to her since her earlier absence and minimal plot in seasons one and two. With her recent recasting, 
it might be jarring to see her become the star so quickly. If Benedict takes the lead in season 4, there would be more time to fully explore Francesca's character and build a connection with viewers before she takes the spotlight. If Francesca doesn't end up being the main focus of season 4, there's still a chance we could see a spin-off featuring her and Eloise. Since the two sisters are off in Scotland, we might see less of them in the main series. A spin-off could delve into Eloise's quest for knowledge and explore Francesca's complicated relationships with John and Michaela. This could set up their stories for future seasons. However, a spin-off might not be on the cards. It's more likely that season 4 will include occasional updates on Francesca and Eloise, though not as prominently. Francesca could still be a key player in the next season, but until the show officially confirms its direction, we can only speculate. Regarding the adaptation strategy, Julia Quinn has hinted that the book for season 4 has already been chosen, though its title hasn't been announced. The most likely candidate is An Offer from a Gentleman, the third book in the series, which focuses on Benedict and Sophie's romance. In this story, Benedict helps Sophie, a servant girl with a noble background, and the two fall in love after she secretly attends a masquerade ball. We can also expect to see the aftermath of Penelope revealing her identity as Lady Whistledown, which could bring in new conflicts and challenges. Additionally, there will be more focus on Penelope and Colin's married life, adding new dynamics to the show. With these elements in play, Season 4 promises to bring some exciting developments, even as it navigates potential changes to the source material. Bridgerton author Julia Quinn recently shared an update on what might be in store for the series beyond Season 4. In an interview with People, Quinn hinted that there are indeed plans for the show's future, while also praising the team's thoughtful and detailed approach to adapting the books. Here's what Quinn said. When they first bought the series, it was clear they had already put a lot of thought into it. We had to carefully decide which characters to include and which ones to leave out, and through that process, it became obvious they were thinking long-term about all the books. So yes, there are plans for Beyond Season 4, but of course plans can always change. This suggests that while the show is definitely looking ahead, the direction could still evolve depending on various factors. Julia Quinn remains cautious about confirming the future of Bridgerton beyond Season 4, noting that those plans can always change. This is likely because Netflix has yet to officially greenlight Season 5. With Season 4 still in development, there's plenty of time for a renewal, but Quinn seems to be playing it safe, not wanting to get ahead of any official announcements. Still, her mention of plans for the series beyond Season 4 is a positive sign for fans hoping for more seasons. Even before Quinn's comments, the outlook for Bridgerton was promising. Season 3 performed exceptionally well on Netflix, pulling in tens of millions of views and staying in the global top 10 for several weeks. This popularity also boosted the viewership of earlier seasons, indicating that audiences are still heavily invested in the series, making a strong case for the show's continued success. Season 5 isn't the only way to keep the Bridgerton universe alive, though. The spin-off Queen Charlotte, A Bridgerton Story has already shown that there's potential for expanding the world further. With eight novels, epilogues, and anthologies to draw from, there's plenty of content left to explore. Based on Quinn's remarks, it seems the creative team is already considering how to continue the story in exciting new ways. And that's that for today's video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Your suggestions for future videos are always welcome in the comments below.